The following is an introduction to curve fitting in Excel. Suppose we're given some data and we want to fit the best fit line through this data. Let's go ahead and create a quick scatter plot. We can see that the plot has some noise to the data, but there's generally some trend that goes through the data. So we can go and right click on the data series and then add trend line dot 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 and we see here it gives us a trend line on the chart and defaults it to a linear there's several different forms of trend lines available we can choose an exponential linear logarithmic polynomial where we can change the order of the polynomial etc um, at the bottom <clears throat> there's other options that you can look through at the bottom a uh, really common one is to display the equation on the chart. If we do that, we can click on the <coughs> text box here and then go to Home, and we can increase the size if we like and format it otherwise. If we right-click on this box, then we can format trend line label. And if we choose that, we can change the number format to be, for example, number, where we can change the number of decimal places that are included. And that can be useful if we want to uh, use this formula to plot or otherwise process the data. So that's a quick uh, way to add a trend line to a plot. Simply right click the data points and then add trend line and then it opens a uh, window on the side where you can go and set different options. Another common option to show is this R squared value. R squared will be close to 1 if there's a pretty good fit between the trend line and the data and it'll be closer to 0 if there's a lot of scatter in the data and or the trend line uh, doesn't fit very well. Let's look at another example. <clears throat> Here's an example of bacteria growth where for E. coli where we have time and the number of cells uh, measured. So the number of cells are measured as a function of time. And then we <clears throat> have a model form for this uh, relationship n equals n0 e to the t over tau where n0 is nominally the initial number of cells and tau is the uh, characteristic time scale. So let's go ahead and plot this data series again using a scatter plot and then if we right click on the data series add trend line now this is a an exponential model form so we'll choose an exponential trend line as well and we'll display the equation on the chart and then let's go ahead and just make it a little bit bigger home increase the font size now <clears throat> the coefficient so here in the formula y and x simply relate to the y-axis and the x-axis not to our the way that we've chosen to name our data in this case x is the x-axis and for us that's t and point 0.587 is the coefficient of our x-axis. So, so that means that 1 over tau, which is the coefficient of t, is the same as 0.0587. So if we want tau, we have 1 over tau equals 0.0587. So if we want to solve this for tau, of course, we just take equals 1 divided by 0.0587 and the characteristic time scale for this data would be 17.036 uh, minutes. So this is an example of using a trend line to extract implied model coefficients. Now in this case we can see that the initial number of points 10.149 isn't exactly uh, 10 and so uh, if we wanted to force it to if we wanted to force n0 to be our known n0 then we could do that separately and we'll come back to that let's look at another example from kinetics in this case we have some data where concentration was measured as a function of time and we want to fit it to the following model form 1 over c minus 1 over c0 equals kt and we want to know the values for k and c0. Again, we'll plot the data. Insert scatter plot. Now, in this case, if we right click and add trend line, we see that none of the Excel um, 
forms, trend line forms, match the data that we have, 1 over C versus T. So a way to get around this is if we rewrite our equation as with parentheses 1 over C minus 1 parentheses 1 over C 0 equals KT. If we consider the quantity 1 over C, then that and call that y, so y minus, and we can call this y0 if we want, equals kt, or y equals kt plus y0. Then we can see that if we plot y versus t, uh, our model does have a linear form, and we would expect, uh, if the model is rep an accurate representation of the data, we would expect a linear trend line to uh, do well. So here, y would be 1 over c, and we're plotting 1 over c versus t, or y versus t. So let's go ahead and create that new series. y equals 1 over c equals 1 divided by c. And then we can fill that down. Now let's go ahead and plot this instead. Plot this with the scatter plot. Get rid of the old one. Now if we right click, add trend line, display the equation on the chart, and then let's go ahead and format the trend line label. And we'll <coughs> make this maybe scientific, and that'll be fine. Now the coefficient of x, again x will be t, so the coefficient of x is our constant k, so we can fill that in. That would be 9.60 e to the minus 6. And c0 is, for us, 1 over y0. So 1.05 e to the minus 3, that's y0, which is 1 over c0. So to recover c0, we go equals 1 divided by 1.05 e to the minus 3, and we've recovered our constant uh, c0. Now if we wanted to, we could um, plug this back into our model and we could say, um, if we solve this equation for C, we could say C equals um, 1 divided by KT plus 1 over C0. And we can make a model for that. C model equals 1 divided by K, and we'll lock that cell times t plus 1 divided by c0, and we'll lock that cell. And now if we plot both of these together, insert, oops, Let's see, I might have just highlighted those incorrectly. Let's try that again. Go ahead and plot these data series together, and we can see that we get, in fact, a very nice agreement between the two data series. So this is an example of what to do if one of your, uh, if the trend line forms aren't, one, aren't consistent with your model equation, you can adjust your model equation so that it fits one of the forms. In this case, you can group terms. So anything we want to do to this model equation, we can. We can take the log of both sides, we can invert both sides, we can add a constant to both sides, we can group terms and reinterpret the grouping of the variables. In this case, we interpreted 1 over c as y, and then we, when we plot 1 over c, or y versus t, it has a linear form, where the intercept would be the quantity 1 over c0 that we can then solve for c0 uh, as we want. Okay, let's look at the final example. In this case, we have um, measured temperature versus uh, vapor pressure. And we want to um, fit the model form uh, log 10 of PSAT equals A minus B over T plus C. Now in this case, uh, this model doesn't fit one of the built-in models for Excel, and we're not able to manipulate, group, or rearrange this equation to get it in one of the forms that Excel gives us. <clears throat> so in this case, we'll use the solver. 
Um, we've taken our temperature versus vapor pressure data and then taken the log of it um, for convenience so that we can just work with this right hand side of the equation. And if we put in, and what we, our real goal is to find the coefficients a, b, and c that allow us to be best fit uh, this data. So in this case, if we, if we guess 10, 1,000, and 100 for a, b, and c, and then plot the model, and I've named these cells, so if we come up there, a, b, and c underscore, and we use c underscore because c isn't a valid name. So if we type equals a minus b divided by t, plus C underscore. Okay, and I just missed the parenthesis. Then if we fill that down, the plot is already set up to plot it for us. And we can see that it's not a very good fit. So we could change this by hand if we wanted to, make it five. Okay, that maybe is an improvement, at least at the low end. B is 500. Okay, not so great. We could do this all day and not, and not get very, uh, very far. So what we're gonna do is <clears throat> use the solver to minimize the, score, the sum of the square error and use that to compute our coefficients a, b, and c. So at every single data point we can compute an error. And the error would be the difference between uh, the data and the model. So in this case we'll, we'll type equals parenthesis the data minus the model. And we can compute that at every single point. <coughs> Now we want to use the we want the error to be always a positive number so that um, we don't have a situation where uh, we could have zero total error by having half of the points be negative and half of the points be positive. We can do that in several ways. We could either um, take the absolute value of the error at every point, or we could simply square each point. And we'll go ahead and square each point. There's a function that will allow us to square the error at every point and then take the sum of the result. It's called the sumsq function. So we type equals sumsq and then we highlight all of our data. And the sum of the error at every point is 91.96. Now we're going to go up to our solver data solver and we're gonna say I want to make the sum square error set objective sum square error click the cell make it minimum as small as it can be by changing variable cells a B and C and we click and drag across those and that's all we need here and we click solve it found a solution and sure enough, 9.4, 1300 minus 33.8 minimizes the sum of the square error and our predicted model function goes through the data points. So this is a useful, um, useful tool to use. Of course, this would work for all the other examples that we've done, but sometimes it's easier to use the um, Excel's built-in trend lines. Let's go back to this bacterial growth problem we, spe we said that we want to find the, uh, we want to force this value here to be uh, n0. One way that we can do that is by linearizing this equation. So if we take the logarithm of both sides of the equation, um, we can say ln of n equals ln of n0 plus t over tau. And now if we plot ln n versus t, we should get a linear profile. So we'll go ln, whoops, we'll go equals ln of n. And we have this profile here. We can plot this up. Whoops, t versus ln n, insert a chart. Now you can see it's much more linear and we can, if we right click this data, add trend line. Now we can display the equation on the chart, but we can also set the intercept to be uh, any value that we want it to be. So in this case, we would want the intercept to be this um, 
30259. So let's go ahead and enter that. Intercept 2.30259. And now we have um, the value of tau will be 1 over the coefficient of t, which is x. So this would be equals equals 1 divided by 0 0.0588. Let's go ahead and see if we can see that. Looks like it's hidden. I'll just put it in here. 17.03 equals 1 over 0 0.0588. And we get something very similar, but this time we're forcing n0 to be uh, 10 effectively by using the intercept function. Okay, and this, so this is a brief overview of uh, curve fitting with trend lines in Excel. Again, as a review, we right-click the data series, add trend line, and then choose the options that we want on the right-hand side. Set intercept, display equation on chart, we can display the R-squared value. If it's not in the form that we want, we can change the form by operating on the equation or grouping terms, and if and in any case, we can also find optimal parameters by minimizing the sum of the square error between the model and the data points.